Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we were reflecting the book of Genesis and we were having a Bible study for the last so many days about the, the book of Genesis and especially about the life of Joseph of the Old Testament. So now we have come to the concluding day, uh, chapters. So these concluding chapters, that is book of Genesis chapter 47 onwards, that three chapters, uh, it's, there is nothing much to explain in details as interpretation, but anybody can read and understand. Those are very simple and it's all blessings that are given by Jacob and how they settled and all those things. So I don't want to go for the details of uh, each and every word that is written in the book of Genesis chapter 48, 47, 48, 49, 40, 50. So, but today as a conclusion of the whole life of Joseph, I would like to give you a comparison between Joseph in the Old Testament and Jesus in the Old Testament. I've told you some time back that the whole Old Testament, what exactly the whole Old Testament? So how do we connect to the New Testament? In short, I feel the Old Testament is nothing but the biography of our Lord Jesus written before his birth. Biography of our Lord Jesus written before his birth. So all whatever that Jesus is going to do, it is already announced to us through the life of so many people. Moses is a pre-shadow. Shadow means not the real one, but the shadow of the one who is supposed to come. So Moses is a shadow of Jesus. Joseph is a shadow of Jesus. Isaac is a shadow of Jesus. So many, like these, so many people in the Old Testament, we can find them as the shadow of Jesus. Even Bible speaks about the shadow. We read Colossians chapter 2 verse 17. Colossians chapter 2 verse 17, we read like this. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. The truth is Christ. So all the other things in the Old Testament is the shadow of what is to come. That is why we call shadow, pre-shadow or pre, uh, pre prefiguration, prefigure. So we, that is what we call type of Christ or prefiguration of Christ or pre-shadow of Christ. So that is, comes from this idea that everything is a shadow but Jesus is the truth. Let's read Hebrew chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 1 we read, Since the law has only a shadow of the good things to come. Since the law has only a shadow. The law means the Old Testament. The Old Testament is only a shadow of the good things to come. Not the true form of these realities. It can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered um, year after year, make perfect those who approach. So, this is only a shadow. So, I am going to speak to you today. Um, the comparison, the shadow that is Jesus, the shadow of Jesus is in the Old Testament. There are so many shadows. One shadow is Joseph himself. So we will take and compare the life of Joseph and life of Jesus. There are so many things which happen in the life of G Joseph is really going to happen in the life of Jesus. So that is why we call Joseph's life can be considered as the biography of Jesus before the birth of Jesus. Let's take one by one. Joseph was a shepherd. Joseph was a shepherd. That is the first point that we need to reflect. Joseph was a shepherd and Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus also claimed that he is also he is a shepherd and I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. And then Joseph in the Old Testament is considered as the beloved of the father. Out of all his children, Joseph was the beloved of the father. And we know in the New Testament, Jesus is the beloved of the heavenly father. During the baptism, the heavenly father appeared and said, this is, uh, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. My beloved son, my beloved son. God the father called Jesus as the beloved son. And Joseph is considered as the beloved of the father. 
and the third point he was sent by his father to his brethren one day jacob told his son see your children your brothers are lost we don't know anything about them i am sending you take some food bread take bread and go and take go and search for your son, uh, your brothers and then joseph collected food and then came in search of his brethren so in fact jesus is also the same way god the heavenly father said to jesus jesus your brothers are lost take the bread from heaven and go down to this earth and search for your lost brethren so this is the same thing that we can see from the joseph story the same thing that is repeated in the life of jesus jesus is sent by the heavenly father to his brethren that is we and all and the fourth point the connection that we can see his brothers start up beating him his brothers start up beating him attacked him his brothers hated him we know in the new testament jesus is hated by his own community his own brethren jesus was hated by him. and then another the next point we can see joseph was beaten so thoroughly brutally and he was hid in a pit he was thrown into a pit we also know from the new testament jesus was brutally beat, beaten and was thrown into a pit and then we know in the old testament next point joseph was sold by his own brother one among one among the 12 brothers one among the 12 who is that judah judah sold joseph for um so we remember judah sold joseph we know in the new testament one among the 12 one among the 12 disciples judas not judah but judas both names are same in fact so judas sold him to his enemies to gentiles the romans judah in the old testament sold joseph to the gentiles egyptians judas in the new testament sold jesus to the gentiles romans now joseph was sold for silver coin jesus was sold for silver coin only difference is joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver coin judas uh, J jesus is sold for 30 pieces of silver coin of course shadow should be lesser important than the original so you can see so many connections like this again let us continue the connections and joseph prophesied his glorious return i mean his glorious uh, coming in glory see joseph had a two dreams in both dreams he said he will be gloriously lifted up and everyone will bow down in front of him that is what joseph said he had a two he had two dreams in which his glory is manifested and that was one of the reasons his brothers hated him because he showed he told his identity who he is his glory in the new testament we read why people hated jesus because jesus said i am the son of the most high god and he spoke about his glory is coming he said the son of man you will see the son of man coming on the clouds the moment they heard it they started hating him they wanted to kill him the same thing why the brothers killed tried to kill joseph because they saw they heard about the glory of joseph why the pharisees sadducees wanted to kill jesus because he was speaking about his glory his glory is coming and they wanted they tried to kill jesus so the same thing can be seen here praise the lord and then again jo joseph was handed over to the gentiles egyptians jesus was handed over to the gentiles the romans and then joseph was though he was sold and he was taken to the uh, egypt 
and then his brothers came and told his father he is dead so in front of jo jacob the father and his family joseph was considered as dead but later we come to know that he comes back when he comes back they came to know that he is alive first they believed that he is dead and later they see he is coming back it also shows the death and resurrection of jesus jesus was really dead and then he really came back so the death and resurrection is also mentioned through the connection comparison study with the joseph and jesus now the next point is joseph was taken to egypt joseph was taken to egypt even in the life of jesus if you know the story after bethlehem joseph and mary took jesus to egypt even jesus was taken to egypt joseph was taken to egypt jesus was also taken to egypt and then we know G joseph when he was in egypt he was serving at the potiphar's house he went through continuous temptation for many years continuous temptation he was tempted but he never committed sin he was tempted very badly but he never ever committed even a small stain of sin that is joseph even in the new testament we know jesus was tempted continuously but he never committed sin he was also tempted but never committed sin praise the lord so now let us read let us uh, let us uh, point, uh, check the other points connected to joseph and jesus connection between joseph and jesus we read we know joseph was falsely accused falsely accused saying trying he's uh, trying to attack the potiphar's wife he was falsely accused and imprisoned jesus was also falsely accused many false accusations were raised against jesus and then he was thrown into the prison so falsely accused and then when he was when joseph was falsely accused he never defended himself saying she is the cause she tempted me i did not tempt him tempt her i did not attack her he she attacked me but joseph kept quiet if joseph opens his mouth and tell the truth the potiphar and wife will have a big problem but joseph made no defense for his himself no defense he made no defense if you look into the new testament when jesus was attacked one after the another so many accusation all are false accusations but we know from the word of god jesus kept quiet he made no defense he was completely quiet all throughout the interrogation and he kept complete silence that is what we understand from the bible praise the lord and then we also remember jesus was imprisoned jesus was imprisoned joseph was also imprisoned and when jesus was when joseph was condemned there were two people condemned along with joseph in the prison two people were condemned along with joseph in the case of jesus we see two people were condemned along with jesus when jesus was dying on mount calvary two thieves were hanged on both sides crucified on both sides and now another point when joseph was in the prison these two people condemned one of them was saved through joseph the other one was lost one was saved the other one is lost in the new testament in regard to jesus two people were condemned along with jesus one of them was saved through jesus christ the other one is lost so you can see so many connections like this so we have already spoken more than 20 connections and then another connection we can see joseph was known for his wisdom 
he is a man of wisdom full of wisdom he is believed with the power of the presence of the holy spirit and we know jesus is also full of wisdom they are filled with the power of the holy spirit and then another connection that we can see he was honored by gentiles in the egypt joseph is honored by the gentiles the whole egyptians honored him but his own brothers re rejected him in jesus case he is honored by all the gentiles all over the world but his own people the jewish people rejected him and then we can see joseph was exalted to the right hand of pharaoh he is the second only person he was second only to the pharaoh he is the prime minister of the whole egypt after the pharaoh he is in charge he is the second in commandment in the whole command in the whole egypt he was exalted to the highest of position after pharaoh we all know in the new testament jesus is exalted to the right hand of the heavenly father in the old testament joseph is exalted to the right hand of the pharaoh and he is the highest in command after pharaoh so the same way jesus is exalted to the right hand to the heavenly father and when joseph started his public ministry being the right hand of the pharaoh he was 30 years of age as per the bible he was 30 years of age when he started his ministry as the prime minister of egypt uh, at the right hand of the father right hand of the pharaoh he was 30 years of age we know from new testament when jesus started his public ministry he is also 30 years of age so there are so many connections like these we can see now there is very important connection who moses sorry joseph in the old testament he blessed the world by giving them bread in the famine when the whole world was suffering with the famine joseph gave them bread my dear brothers and sisters jesus gave the bread for all those who are thirsty all those who are in need in fact joseph was the only source of bread for the whole world during that pandemic uh, sorry the famine time the whole world jesus joseph was the only source of bread now in the new testament we know jesus is the only source of living bread for the whole world that is why jesus himself asked us to pray give us our daily bread only he can give us the bread that is why in the old testament when everyone came to pharaoh pharaoh please give us bread then pharaoh said go to joseph and do what he says in fact this is a pre shadow of jesus eh, the whole world needs the food for daily food in fact the heavenly father is telling us go to jesus he is the living bread he is the bread comes down from heaven given for the salvation of humanity he is the living bread go to jesus the whole world is starving today the whole world is in famine today everyone is thirsting for bread the only living bread the life giving bread is eternal bread is jesus himself therefore god himself through these bible passages telling the whole humanity go to jesus he will do and do whatever he tells you to do because he is the life giver bread the bread the one who gives you love giving bread praise the lord so these are the the very powerful connections we can see in the bible we know joseph has got a name in egypt there is another name was given to joseph what is the name that is given to joseph in egypt safnath fanaya safnath fanaya is the name that was given to joseph what does it mean the man to whom all the mysteries revealed the name meaning of the name is the man to whom all the mysteries are revealed so jesus is the man through whom all the mysteries are revealed jesus said all the mysteries of heaven is given to you 
only to you not for outsiders but for you and jesus was revealing the mysteries to his disciples praise the lord so another connection that you can see joseph when he met his brothers he knew them but they did not recognize him he recognized them but they didn't recognize him in the life of jesus we can see jesus recognized his disciples and his brethren but they did not recognize him many often very often so this is same thing and every time god recognizes us he knows us but we don't know god and here jesus recognized his disciples but they did not recognize him and then and we also know joseph wanted all his brothers to come to him though these are the brothers who hated him these are the brothers who sold him beaten him threw, threw him to the pit but joseph he forgave all of them unconditionally he said this beating is not given by you it is given by the heavenly father jesus also prayed the cup of sorrow that is not given by the pilot and soldiers but the cup given by my heavenly father so the same thing joseph also said and he said all the brothers let them come to me the same way in the new testament jesus wanted everyone including the enemies including the gentiles including the non believers everyone should come to me so this is what jesus said come to me all those you carry heavy burdens i will give you rest in fact joseph said the same to his brothers come to me i will give you a land you can rest here praise the lord so now when joseph was lost joseph was sold almost for 18 18 to 20 years 18 to 20 years jesus was sorry 18 18 years the brothers had no touch with joseph the brothers of joseph had no connection with uh, joseph for 18 years he was hidden for the brothers in the new testament we know after when he was 12 years we know something about jesus after that until 30 uh 30 years almost for 18 to 20 years jesus was also hidden we have no clue about him he was submitted to he was submissive to his parents and he was having private life nobody knows anything about it just like joseph in joseph's case at least we know what happened but these brothers did not know what was happening to him so these are the connections and then joseph in the old testament is considered as a man of compassion jesus is considered as a man of compassion now when he had a reconciliation with his brothers when he called his brothers joseph is reconciling is with his brothers through at supper at dinner he arranged a dinner he asked them to sacrifice a lamb prepare a food and in the food for the food they all of them 12 brothers they sit around the altar i mean around the table and they had the food my dear brothers and sisters this same thing that jesus did along with his brethren the 12 apostles he sat around the table and he had the supper in the supper he revealed himself and in fact joseph was trying to reveal himself and expose exposing himself to his brothers and he started with this supper before the supper joseph made his servants through he made sure to wash the feet of the wash wash the feet of his brothers joseph washed the uh, feet of his brothers before they came for the food though it was not joseph it was his steward who washed but it was from the part of joseph in the new testament we know before the supper jesus washed jesus himself washed the feet of the disciples and we also know the disciples they before they started for the dinner they confessed their sins they confessed their sins to the steward and then they shared everything to the steward we know before we receive holy communion we, or before holy mass we have to confess our sins and joseph and his brothers when they had that supper they offered all their food and fruit and everything that they brought from their home they offered we all know we have in the holy mass we have offertory we bring the food and fruit and all the other things as an offertory 
So we can see so many connections like these in the New Testament and the Old Testament. And then after this revelation, what happened to the brothers? The brothers rejoicing gloriously, they went back and proclaimed the glory of Joseph in Egypt. The brothers went to their father, went to the land of Canaan and to their native land and proclaimed the glory of Joseph. In New Testament, after the resurrection of Jesus, the ten, the eleven disciples and the twelve disciples, they went around and proclaiming the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. And in this journey, Joseph gave all provisions for their journey. In the New Testament, Jesus gave all provisions for their journey. And then, before going, Jesus said, Everybody, I will prepare a place for you in Egypt. You all come back with me and stay with me here in Egypt. This is what Jesus, Joseph told his brothers. Go and bring your father. I have place, prepare a place for you in Egypt. So that you all can come and stay with me. Jesus also said the same thing to his disciples. I will go before you and let, prepare. In my father's house there are enough and more rooms. I will go before you and will prepare a place for you. So that you all will be with me and my father forever. Jesus also said the same thing. And then Joseph brought all his family members to be in Egypt to live along with the Gentiles. Jesus taking all the Jewish people and also all the Gentiles together to the heavenly promised land. Once and for all, we all will be living together with our Lord Jesus and also with the Gentiles because he is the Lord of not only Jewish people and Christians but also Gentiles. So these are the very strong connections and comparisons that you can see between Joseph and Jesus. And this is very important for us to know because these are the shadows of the what is to come. Jesus is the real one, the real one. These are only shadows. And the shadows were given so much of importance in the Bible. How much more the real one. Let's pray together, sing together the offer dream. And my dear brothers and sisters, let us every day make sure that you join for these homilies and listen to this word of God. Because we are having a Bible study about the whole Bible. By the time you finish, you know, every day you listen to the word of God, every day like this, you will know the whole Bible. You will know the connections, comparisons, and all the secrets of the Bible will be revealed to you. So encourage all your friends and family members to join for this daily live streaming and listen to the word of God. It will be a great benefit and blessing for you all.